Hey, All right, welcome away. back. The Audible is in the air. Talk about Audibles. I got an Audible right here. I got sandwiched by some uh, some high-powered guys here. Welcome to the Audible. I'm Kim Bocamper. We're here with you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 4.30. It's your chance to be interactive with myself as well as you can see members of the Miami Dolphins. If you're on Facebook, check it out. You can ask your questions. We'll answer your questions as we go through the show. This is day two of the Audible, and it's August 1st. And know what, day three or four of uh, training camp, Mike? Day three. Looking forward it's to it. It's been a little hot out there, man. It's been hot. Getting used to it. Uh, we feel like the team's headed in the right direction. Yep. Uh, the, the practices we had so far have been great. Uh, we're looking forward to going out there tomorrow, competing again, and then having an off day. Mike Pouncey, three-time Pro Bowler. And, uh, Mike, I know uh, there's been a lot of talk about this offensive line, and you're right in the middle of it. So, literally in the middle of it. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Also with us, Vice President of Football Operations, Mike Tannenbaum. And uh, Mike, uh, uh, you've had a chance to uh, uh, to look at this team and, and what you guys have put together in the offseason so far. Are, are you happy with the results that you're seeing? Yeah, you know, just to pick off where Mike left, you know, um, one of the things we talked about in the offseason, Chris Greer, our general manager, Steve Ross, our owner, Adam Gase, our head coach, talked about having more depth. And I think, you know, on the offensive line, we can see that right away, you know, adding veteran guys like Jermon yep. Bushrod and then being so fortunate in draft, Laramie Tunsil. You know, we're, we're hoping that we have more depth and more versatility because you really, you know, hopefully you don't have injuries. Yep. But over a 16-game season, the way pro football is now, you know, we, we, we had to do a better job, you know, giving these guys, you know, more depth. And it's fun to see it. You know, being on the field now, today was our first day in pads and really feel, I agree with Mike, we're heading in the right direction. Mike, you know, I've been watching for the last few days and, and I can't keep track of all the combinations you guys have used in the offensive line. You're rotating a lot of guys in different positions so that everyone, you can see the versatility, you can see what position other guys can play, get them ready. How, how has that worked out with everybody? Uh, like Mr. Tannenbaum said, it's a great problem to have. To you have can that call one. Mike here. It's a, it's a casual thing here tonight. You Kim, Kim before the extension, it was, you know. Yeah, But it's great to have those guys and go out there. And uh, we're, we're just right now trying to see who the best yeah. five guys are, you know. And uh, I feel like whenever you have competition, it brings the best out of each and every player yeah. on the football field. And right now, that's what we're having right now. A, guy, a bunch of guys competing out there for the best five positions on the field. And uh, we're looking forward to it. I can't wait to see which guys end up, you know, being the front yeah. runners in, in the, in the uh, position battle. But we'll see how it goes. Well, Mike, I'm, I'm watching, and you got a lot of guys out there that are center guards, guard tackles, all those kind of things. And you're trying them in the different positions. The idea that to figure out which, if you know, guy goes down, where you can move him, and, and the options that you have when you get down to that that point where you got to come down to the 53-man roster. Yeah, a couple of thoughts come to mind. First of all, you know, we've talked about some of the additions, but you know, there's also a lot of credit should be given to the guys coming back, guys like mm -hmm. Dallas Thomas, Billy Turner, Juwan James coming off of the toe injury. Like yeah. they've worked very hard yeah. in the off season, yeah. and they're better players. You know, Mike yeah. Mike's in there every day with them, and you know, Billy Turner playing some tackle yeah. and. Dallas could play both sides of guard. And, you know, typically you take seven offensive linemen to a game. So versatility is really important. That, yeah. and, and Tunsil's certainly been shifting between guard and tackle. And, and that's really important because, again, over the course of the season, they're going to have to plug in at a couple different places. Yeah, Mike, during the, uh, during the off season between last year and now, made some changes in the coaching staff and in the weight room also. And, and I know there's been a – uh, a big emphasis on in the weight room, getting this team ready, getting this team stronger, doing all the things you want to be to be a physical offensive line. You starting to see some of that uh, play out in the football field? No question. I feel like uh, our guys are really, really strong this year. Coach Dave's done a great job in uh, this offseason with getting guys to uh, push guys to get them better throughout yeah. the offseason. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited about it. I can't wait. I love the coaching staff, what they bring to our team. Uh, they bring competitive nature each and every day. As coaches that really love football yeah. and they know what they're talking about. So when you have those kind of guys, we're just gelling together right now, looking forward to this. You know, season. it's funny. I look, I see some guys out there, and I see the offensive guys, John a little bit with the defensive coaches, and the defensive coaches, yeah. John a little bit with the offensive guys. And it's fun. It kind of lightens training camp up. But there's, uh, you know, there, there's, it's about competition. It's about competing every day. It's about competing every single play, especially in training camp now, especially for some of the younger guys, like the free agents. Man, they've got to take full advantage of every snap they get out there. So they can get themselves known and, and get their their game on tape, so you can make a decision when the time comes. Yeah, and I think we're seeing that uh, all throughout the roster. You yeah. know, I think our personnel department, Adam Ingroff, Joe Shane, those guys did a really good job. So, you know, AJ Hendy had an interception today. You yeah. know, a, a free agent at uh, at safety, uh, Rashawn Scott. You know, yeah. local University of Miami product. He showed up a couple times uh, already. So, you know, not only do we feel good about the draft, but there are a couple of free agents that you know, could impact us either this year or, or down the line, you know, being on the practice squad. 
Hey, yeah, you know, we got some, as I said, we are interactive, so we're going to answer your questions as we go through the programs here this afternoon. And, uh, Mike, I got one for you. Uh, it's from Alex uh, Kiwa. I'm going to give you a whatever. I'm, I'm not too very good with this this pronunciation there, but I, I did my best, and that's what you're going to get. How excited are you to go to battle with those guys all year long that you've been working with during the offseason in the weight room and all the time you spend on the field? And, and how special do you think you guys can be as a unit? Well, I'm very excited uh, to, to, to work with these guys all season long. Uh, I feel like we got a really good group. Uh, we're really into our offensive line coach, the stuff that he's brought us, the new techniques, uh, the things that he wants us to do yep. out on the football field have been really, really good. So I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. You know, we feel like we're a stronger unit than we were last year, yep. uh, depth-wise and, uh, you know, physically-wise. And so we're ready to see how we can do. You know, the, it was interesting today. You, you look at training camp and uh, you got Peyton Manning out on the sideline. And Peyton, who uh, everyone knows by now that uh, he's got a good relationship with Adam Gaze. They were together uh, in uh, in Denver. So so Peyton comes out here and uh, Leo Anthony uh, Martucci sends a, a question. Is is Manning helping Tannehill? Well, I'll tell you, most of the time I see him on the sidelines. They have any interaction prior to practice out there, Mike? I'll tell you what, you know, Peyton's uh, he's been here a couple times. Yep. He, he's helped all of us. Uh, he addressed the uh, scouting department this morning. We talked about quarterback play, mm -hmm. player acquisition. So, you know, have guys like Dan Marino and Peyton Manning. You know, Wes Welker's been here a few times. So it's a great resource, not only just for the players, but, you know, for us on the staff. You know, it's great to be able to talk football with a, yeah. you know, future Hall of Famer. And, and, you know, someone like Peyton Manning is unbelievable yeah. to play at his level for so yeah. long. Um, it, it's just been it's a real treat to have him around. You know, Mike, and, and to have a guy like Peyton around, yeah. look, not only was he a great quarterback, I mean, he's a, he's, you know, he's, he's a quality person. He's a guy whose worth, work ethic is, is unparalleled. Uh, and, and to have a guy that just carries himself the way that he's carried himself during his career uh, around the locker room, around the team, out in the practice field, um, a lot of the young guys got to look over there and say, wow, that, that's, that's pretty cool. It's cool. I mean, when Peyton talks, everyone listens. Yeah. Uh, you know, he has so much knowledge about the game of football, uh, the, the passion and, 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 the, and the effort that he put out on the football field while he played the game was unmatched. And so whenever a guy like that comes in, you kind of, you know, gravitate to yeah. him and kind of be around a guy like that and see what kind of made him successful and how he played so long in the NFL. And it's been great for our football team so well, far. Some of those young quarterbacks have to be salivating to get over and just get a – a tip from him, Brad and Doherty, Doherty and, uh, and some of those guys, just to just to kind of get any tidbits they can out of Peyton Manning. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, if you're Dysart or Doherty, yeah. and, you, and you got you know Dan Marino on one side, <laughs> Peyton Manning, that, that's that's pretty good. Oh, by the way, you got you know uh, quarterback coach and Bo Hardigree and yeah. Clyde Christensen as well. Yeah. How many phone calls do you think there were? Hey, Dad, yeah. you wouldn't believe Peyton Manning was out <laughs> on the sideline. There has to be some of those going on. Uh, yeah, yeah. There, there's no question. Again, I think that says a lot about Adam that you know we've been able to track some of the people. That we've had and you know all spring they've been here and, and it's also good you know guys like you know Wes Walker could give a tip to a defensive back yeah. as well and it's uh it's just great having those guys around the program good good hey uh, you are watching the audibles I said you can get involved it's uh, interactive go ahead and send your questions on Facebook we'll answer them as we go along and uh, keep you up to date with all that so uh it's a good chance for you to get in and get your voices heard on the program as I said we'll be here Monday Wednesdays and Fridays 4 30 during training camp so we'd love to have you to get involved as uh, as much as you can over the time uh Mike this football team uh 12 years one one playoff game um I said it on the first show uh, and I'll probably say that, that that's got to change. It has right? to change. It, it's it got to change. And, you know, th this fan base is a very loyal fan base. And, and it's time for them to be rewarded with a, with a, a season that's, uh, that's approaching the playoffs or, or a playoff team. And, and I know those guys in the locker room, the commitment that you guys have to it uh, is unparalleled by the fans. So it's a, I think it's a meeting of both minds. Both sides want to get to where you want to be. Not going to come easy, but how do you guys get there? Well, we're trying to build a championship football team yeah. right here. And, and, and building a championship football team is more than just me saying it. It's going out there each and every day, practicing like you're in a, in a football yeah. game, giving everything you have on, on, on and off the football field, and coming together as a football team. The chemistry that you have, when you love each other, you go out there and you play for each other a different way. And uh, I feel like that's something that we've worked on all offseason. We've gotten better at that, and we're continuing to throughout training camp. And yeah. can't wait to see how it turns out. All right, this is a training camp is always a shuffle with players. Nicked up, little little injuries, tweaks, and these types of things. JHI didn't practice out there today. Uh, that's the bad news. The good news: Arian Foster was activated. Uh, Bobby McCain comes back; he's activated. You go out and you get Brandon Harris, former UM player. Ice Harris is coach down at Booker T, who's now a coach at University of Miami. So he's he's well known. The family's well known around here, around South uh, South Florida, and and Rashawn Melvin. So so you go out and you get some guys to to bolster your lineup. You hate to see one of you guys go down. Uh, you know, just hopefully it'll be for a short period of time. But uh, that's something you're going to deal with from here and until well, until the season's over. For quite frankly. 
Yeah, and, and Kim, you know, another piece of good news was Damian Williams uh, pa yeah. passed uh, his exam today, so he's now. Oh, just the, recently, right? Yeah, yep. yeah, and he'll he'll practice tomorrow night. You know, good. tomorrow night we have a night practice. So, you know, Chris, Adam, and I are constantly looking at you know ways to improve the team, and you know, right now we're just focused on the process. The results yeah. will come, and you know, one of the things too that you know, Mike, to, Mike, and the other guys don't get enough credit. Not only did we make a lot of additions, but you know, you look at the 2016 Dolphins, like we're, we're on paper stronger yep. and better conditioned than last year's team. And a lot of the improvement of a team year after year is going to be, are your players getting better? And uh, it's just exciting to see these guys, you know, with this new staff. And again, you know, we feel like we've addressed, you know, the depth at a number of positions. Um, and, and we're excited to, you know, play the Giants, you know, a week for Friday. Can't get here soon enough. You no, know, you know, there's a lot of people waiting for the first football game, no question. Hey, yeah, Wayne Collard uh, from Mike, uh, Mike Pouncey, we were talking about the offensive line and talking about the new guys that come in. How's Laramie, Tun Laramie Tunzel fitting in with the offensive line? Now, he's played left tackle. You've had him at the left guard, so he's getting some uh, some chances to work at, at different spots. He's played with the first group, played with the second group, so he's kind of getting a mix in there. What, what are you seeing out of him? Well, the first thing that I noticed about him is – you know, off the football field. Yeah. He's, he's been phenomenal. Yeah. He's, he's a rookie that does everything the right way. He comes in, he's trying to get the respect of the vets. Anything we ask him to do, he does it. Yeah. Now, on the football field, he's a natural football player. He yeah. kicks very well. He bends well. He can run block. He's yeah. We got very lucky to get this guy where we got him at in the draft, and he's going to really help our football team, whether this year or down the road. You guys yeah, this, this guy sounds like a future scout. Very well. Hey, you <laughs> hired? <laughs> he won't be a scout until scout salaries go a little higher, right? His pay grade is a little, a little, a little different. Used to a little well, different, a little different pay grade. I, I won't need to get paid out the football. <laughs> that's well, that, that's good for you. That's good for you. Hey, uh, one thing when you talk about Laramie, when I, when I watch him today, was you guys had the pads on for the first time today, so it's a chance to get out there and hit a little bit, although you guys have been going at it pretty good for the, for the first couple of days. Um, I watch him, great feet, great base, bends his knees, good balance, good set, lie side to side. Really Seems strong. to me, I one guy came and threw a spin move at him, kind of let him do a spin move, stayed there and, and caught him at the end. And uh, he's so he's, he seems to really have all the basics uh, that you're looking for. And, and when I look back at some of the tape that we've seen on him, well, he just looks like a road grader when it comes to running the football. Well, he does. I mean, you've seen him today in the in the one-on-one -on -one drill that we had where he drove the guy out the ball. I mean, we don't encourage fighting, but when he yep. he got tested, he didn't back down. And that's yep. the first thing you look for in the offensive lineman. Hey, is this guy going to back down if somebody pushes him? He didn't. He, he passed the test today. And we, I mean, we don't encourage it, but we were happy to see it. And, and are, there, are there going to be any more fights here during this training? <laughs> no, nah, we hope You not. think that's we the just, last of them? Uh, well, it's hot out there. So <laughs> no, no, be know. honest. You think that's the last of them? <laughs> no, nah, I'll be one more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the other thing about Laramie that's also encouraging is, you know, again, he's coming from the SEC, playing yeah. left tackle there. Yeah. And, you know, he's facing the best pass rushers in the country. So, yeah. you know, he's played at a high level. He was successful. He gave up two sacks at college. So, you know, he has a game that should translate really well to, to, to this level. Yeah, and, he, and he's one of the guys you talk about the depth in that offensive line. Some union, you, you talked about Bushrod, Sam Young comes in. You've got some other guys there. And, and, and all those other guys that were battling for two two guard spots, everyone is assuming that it's going to be one guard spot that they're, they're going to battle for, which should make that more uh, more of a strength for this football team. So uh, as things are sitting right now, it looks like that offensive line could really be a strength of this team. Yeah, and again, it, to us, it's about the depth. And, you know, we have four games to sort out who will – be playing with Mike and at what position, but you know all across the roster, Kim. You know there's a lot of healthy competition, not only for stars for, but for roster spots and you know special teams will go a long way in determining some of these battles. We got a couple people calling in uh, or right, sending in some questions as far as uh, players are concerned. So let let me talk to you about this, John. Saw I tell you, I, I was out today watching practice. I've watched every practice so far, and and I got to tell you, uh, Jakeem Grant, this kid. Every time I every time I look around. He's making a play, made two or three plays that, that made people ooh and on the stands today. Little guy, very active, very much of a jitterbug type of a guy, runs right. good routes, catches the ball. Uh, he's looking pretty good for you, know? Yeah, you know, when you look at him from a scouting perspective, you know, there's a floor and a ceiling. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we see the floor as a special teams guy that is going to be in the coverage games yep. as a punt returner, and then his ceiling is limitless. Like, yep. you know, what he could do, you know, in the slot, you know, we'll see uh, – over the course of the preseason, I'm sure he'll get, you know, moves around. But he has good hands. Obviously, he has very good play speed and quickness. So, you know, this is a guy that should go the game early, Kim, because of his ability to play yep. in the return game. And then, you know, I'm sure the coaches will, you know, work him into the offense. And, and again, to have that depth at the game, to have a fifth receiver that could do so much on special teams, important. John's always also asking about the other receiver, Lante Carew. Mm -hmm. Big guy, yep. big body, uh, catches the ball well. 
uh, my 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 thought looking at him probably got to get a little better route, running routes at this level, but uh, he, he's got he's got everything you're looking for also. Yeah, and what we saw at Rutgers is what we've already seen. He's very good at the contested catch, yep. big physical, natural catcher. Again, we think he could help early on uh, in the kicking game and the coverage units. So you know to go with you know Devontae, Kenny, and Jarvis to have those two young guys that could be special yep. teams guys. You know, we feel like we're going to have good depth of that position. Again, you know, University of Miami's Rayshon Scott was a guy we signed as a free agent after the draft who who's done well. He, he showed up a couple times in the spring, and, you know, but putting on the pads uh, hasn't slowed him down either. So, again, like the depth of that position, especially how they could impact us in the kicking game. Good, good. You've joined us on the Audible. We're with you uh, until about 5 o'clock today with your 4.30 every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday through training camp. Again, if you want to get your questions answered, just go ahead and send them along on, during Facebook, and we'll get to them. Also, uh, Jonathan Brand's asking, how are the rest of the uh, draft picks looking as far as you're concerned? Yeah, uh, like I said, you know, so far, you know, we're, we're encouraged. You know, Xavier Howard started off on PUP, but we feel like, you know, he's heading in the right direction. We saw him in the spring. We like his length. We like his athleticism. Uh, Brandon Doty at, at quarterback, Jordan Lucas at corner. You know, there's, um, you know, we feel like there's these guys can contribute a lot, you know, and again, they'll have an opportunity to play, you know, in the preseason. Yeah. You guys out there, you're looking, you're seeing these tapes every day, and you're looking at your guys, and obviously you're looking at the offensive line. Ryan getting to work with Coach Gaze and seeing the different things, doing a lot of work on his footwork, which is I know something that Adam talked about, and you can see him out there. But you got to be happy to look out there and see Devontae Parker. They're throwing the ball. At you throw a 50-50 ball up to Devontae Parker, he's going to get that ball. Oh, yeah. And you see it out there, and he's got the, the long ball. You've got the, the young guys. Everyone knows, obviously, about Jarvis Landry and talk about Carew, talk about Jakeem Grant and all these guys. And, boy, there looks like a lot of guys out there that can make plays and move the chains. Well, I just enjoy seeing those guys come to work every day. Yeah. You know, that group, they compete very well. Uh, their coach does a great job of pushing them to the max each and every day. I think he was a big time addition yep. to that room because he's the guy that's played in this league and he's a guy that understands what it takes to make it in this yep. league. And so he's, he's, he's pushing those guys in the right direction. And obviously we have a lot of talent in that room, as you can see on the, on the monitor right here with those guys. They make a lot of plays yep. and they make it easy for us out there. You have a guy like Jarvis that, that, that he works. It, it, it rubs off. It's got to rub off on these guys. Yeah. You know, absolutely. His competitiveness, you know, that's yep. the number one attribute when you talk about Jarvis, his production, his competitiveness. Yep. And sure, it's infectious, you know, for, for everybody. Yeah, Mike, I know you got some place to be. We certainly appreciate All right, thanks. Okay. stopping by here on the Audible second show, and you're right up at the right up at the top of the list, With man. With such esteemed guests yeah, as well. Yeah, there you like go. That. Hey, you know, I'm just sitting here in awe. You know, <laughs> of who's rolling into this room? But appreciate right, you stopping thank you. by. Appreciate All it. Right, okay. Thanks a lot. Take care. All right, Mike. Let's get back to let's get back to business here. And uh, you, you, this is your, your your what training camp is this for you? Five, six, six, yeah, six training six. camps. Six. Yep. First day of training camp, always rough. You know what? It's gotten easier each and every year, uh, just because just you know what to expect. expect. You know, yeah. you know what to expect. You can't, you can't predict the weather and how mm -hmm. hot it's going to be and stuff like that, or the amount of reps we take. But just to be able to come in with a with a clear mind, saying, "Hey, this is what we got to do. We know how long we're going to be in a hotel. We know how long, we, how many preseason games yeah. we got to play in. You kind of have it all laid out for you, so you know what to expect. So it makes it easier." Now I know this. I've been around football a long time. The offensive line. That's that's a unique group of guys. Oh yeah. They always hang together. Yeah. They always seem to have the same sense of humor, all the same sense. And usually it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a bathroom humor. humor. Oh, Let me put it that way along that offensive line. You've been around for a long time. One thing about training camp, it's tough. You're away from home. You're in a different environment. But the good, good side of it is it's a chance for you guys, for a team to bond. Oh, yeah. And you get close. You know, any good, you know, any good, uh, any good uh, Mike Pouncey stories coming out of the your 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 early training camps? We're only three days in, so it's going to get so better. You got plenty of training camps now. <laughs> well, it has a lot of characters throughout that room. Yeah, we, we, have some, have. we have some good guys in that room, and so it it's been fun, man. I I, I enjoy training camp. Yeah. Not to say I don't, you know, love being home with my girl and my yeah. kids, but. It's a time to get away, you know. Yeah. Football is, is our sanctuary, you know. It's yeah. where we come, and it brings us to peace, you know, especially if you love the game. It, yeah. you, when you're around it a lot during training camp, you, you appreciate it more. And the time that you miss from it, if you, what time you sit out from football, you, you miss it so yeah. much. So that, that last month leading into training camp, I'm just yeah. I can't wait, man. I can't wait till it gets here. I don't care about a birthday party. I just yeah. want to go to training camp and just get it over with and just go out there and have fun. Well, well I tell you, the other thing about it, too, is it, it's, you know, you have no other choice. You kind of put the cell phone away. You put your other stuff away. I don't have to worry about these responsibilities. There's only one thing I've got to worry about, being on time for my meetings, oh, yeah. being on time for practice, and, and getting the job done. You don't even know what day it is. Yeah, you? It, exactly. Honestly, it doesn't matter because you, you, every four days you get a day off, and that's the only day you yeah. remember is the day off. So. Speaking of that, uh, as far as practices are concerned, uh, the next practice that will be available to the public will be on Thursday. That will be a 9 a.m. practice. 
open to the public. So it'll be a couple days here where you won't uh, uh, you won't have the opportunity uh, to go see the team. But Thursday night will be nice, or Thursday nine o'clock in the morning, uh, give you a chance to go out and, and check them out. Hey, uh, one of the other one of the other areas in this football team that I think is is going to be under a lot of scrutiny are the linebackers, and a lot of it because of you know the 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 run the the ability of teams to run against this football team offensively last year and I know I've talked to I've talked to a lot of guys on the defensive side of the football and, and that's uh, one of the one of their goals is to become a much better run defending yep. unit you look at the young linebackers out there Kiko Alonzo uh, you look at uh, uh, Janoris Jen or uh, Jelani mm -hmm. Jenkins he just seems to keep get better and better every year uh, Koa Misi his big question, can he stay healthy throughout the season when he's healthy? Great player. What do you, what do you see out of those guys? I see a, a productive group when they're out there, uh, the guys that really can fly around and make a lot of plays. Uh, I remember when Kiko was playing with the Buffalo Bills, mm -hmm. a young guy. Uh, he was making so many plays. I was like, man, this kid's going to be special. He's going to be special. Now, he's dealt with injuries, uh, but he's come back. He's bounced back, and he's had a great offseason. You could tell the way he sets the defensive front. Uh, those three guys with him uh, – Koa Misi and Jelani yeah. Jenkins, they work really well together. And I think uh, Coach Burke's done a great job with those guys, uh, getting them in their positions, learning the defense as fast as possible, and, and kind of letting those guys take over yeah. everything. Instead of being in their ear the whole time, just, hey, go out there and play football. And that's what they've done so far, and they've done a great job. Yeah, and you guys get a chance to see, uh, see those guys a lot and, and see what they do. Flip side, let me go to the other guys, the defensive front. You yeah. look up there, Mario Williams is here. Uh, you got, uh, you got um, Cam is back, and, and – Looks like nothing ever happened to him, and oh, yeah. uh, I think Indomik and Sue seems to be, you know, very comfortable. You know, he came in new. Now he's he's got a comfort level there. Knows what's expected to him. Jim Washburn, his old defensive line coach, is there, so he feels comfortable with that. And a lot of good things seem to be setting up uh, for that defensive front. Well, I'll tell you one thing: that, that defensive line is getting off the bus yeah. first, wherever stadium we go to. That, <laughs> that, that, that defensive line is going to be good, yeah, yeah. and uh, we're excited to see what they can do. But the players you named, I mean, these guys are all Pro Bowl, all Pro players. Yep. Uh, as long as they can stay healthy and work together all season, we're looking for our defense, you know, to be the strength of the team. Even though we want our offense to be that, I mean, we have a lot of great players on our defense. And so I can't wait to see what these guys can do out there, all four of them yeah. together. And uh, we'll see how it goes. But uh, right now, they, they're, they're making us a better front because we're playing against one of the best defense lines in, in the NFL throughout practice every Man, day. Man, you know, I, I didn't realize Mario Williams was that big. Oh, he's huge. I, I really he's didn't huge. realize that he was that big. Yeah. I knew he was a big, fast guy, but – Man, when I saw him come out, I go, holy goodness, that guy is yeah, a big man right there. It usually don't make humans that big. No. So he's like a super. Well, I saw him standing next to Sue and, and, and Cam, and he's, like, he's, I mean, he's, he's casting a shadow over those guys, man. <laughs> he's a big it's man. It's a good thing you're not out there. You don't oh, have to deal okay. with him out there. Yeah, I, I don't think my arms are long enough to play tackle. Hey, you know, one of the guys that, that every time I see him, it just makes me smile, is Brandon Albert. Yep. Cause he's just a cool guy, oh, he's right? Cool, dude. cool, cool guy, kind of got that that pace to him and savvy, everything. Savvy vet, but but a good good guy, a quality guy, and, and he's got to be a fun guy to play with. He is. He's excited, man. I I, I enjoy Brand. I enjoy working with him every day. Yep. Uh, he's a guy that loves football. He, he's passionate about it. He comes in. He uh, he works for. He works yep. to be the best player that he can be. Now, obviously, he's dealt he dealt with a big time yep. injury uh, a year ago, and he's came back from it. He's been great, and uh, we can't wait to see. The sky's the limit for him. Uh, obviously, he's coming off his second Pro Bowl, and uh, we look forward to make to another you one. You know, year. sometimes you know the value of a guy to a team yep. you when you lose him. Yep. And when he got hurt, you, I could just see guys coming over and coming over and coming over. A, because they lost a player that's important to their football team, but maybe more importantly than that, they lost a friend. friend yep. and, and, and you could really see that come out, and, and I don't think fans see that all the time, but uh, – Look, it's tough. You know, it's tough when you're out there and you've, there's a guy that you've been sweating with all offseason long. You see a guy rehab all offseason long to get ready to play, and then bang, first game, you go down with an injury. It, it, that, that's, that's, that's tough. It's tough. Yeah, well, you know, fan, fans only see what happens on yeah. Sunday. You know, they don't, they don't see what happens Monday through Saturday. And uh, that's why we have a different appreciation for yeah. a guy, whether he goes out and plays good or plays bad. Yeah. You know what that guy put in throughout the week. And uh, every week's not going to be perfect. But uh, uh, you can appreciate a guy that comes in every day and busts his butt to get better and, and for the better good of the football team. Hey, we've been hearing a lot, and Christian Page sends a question here. We've been hearing a lot uh, about this defensive wide nine yeah. and what they're doing. <clears throat> and basically, from where, where, where I look at it, you basically, you basically spread your defensive line out. Yeah. You've taken your defensive ends and you've put them at the outside. If there's a tight end, they're going to line up outside the tight end. If there's a, a slot guy playing tight, they're going to line up. They're going to be the outside guys on what is, quote, the, 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 the line of scrimmage in that box right there. Yep. They're going to be the outside. 
Tackles may widen a little bit, and that means the linebackers are going to have to fill a little bit more and do things. But as far as pass rushing, the wide nine should be interesting. You got, you've been going against it so far. What, what do you see in it, and do you see – uh, things that make it more difficult for you as an offensive lineman. I think it makes it more difficult because uh, you know they, the the wide nines they set the edge of the defense, yep. and then when you have a great player like Indomitian and Sue in the middle that can get pushed back on any play, it kind of collapses the whole pocket and it gives the quarterback no other way to go, so he can't roll out when the, yep. when the pocket breaks down. So I mean it's great for our defense. Uh, obviously we we do that because of the players that we have. Yep. A lot of teams can't do it. But uh, I feel like our, our guys are good enough to be able to do that, and that's why we do it a lot, and it's been helping us so far. Against Iran, it allows them to get upfield, force everything oh, yeah. back inside, <clears throat> excuse me, where the reinforcements are. And, and you see so many teams now in the NFL, and I watch it in college, it drives me crazy. There's a soft corner, and by the time anyone gets to the to the ball carrier, if he's if they're running a toss or a he's sweep, already he's already around oh. the corner, and then, then it's, it's tough. So getting guys upfield is, is – so not only is it a – is an advantage for the passing game, but it should help the running game and force things yeah, inside to the big guys a little more. Yeah, it does, and, and that's what they've done so far. They've done a great job at it. Uh, it's only making us better because yeah. you rarely see stuff like this, and when we do, it's good to be able to go out there and practice against it every day. And uh, like I said before, that D-line, that defense, uh, we're looking for big things out of yeah. them, but we appreciate what they do for us each and every day. Mike, Mike, what do you have to do differently at training camp now that you've been around this, this many years? And you've got plenty of years to go, but you, you, you've been through the grind. You've had the, you got, had the nicks, the injuries. And, you know, the, the longer you play, you, there's always going to be a little something that stays with you oh, yeah. that you've got to deal with. How, how do you deal with training camp now differently than you did when you first came in as a rookie as far as – maintaining yourself so that you can play at the peak performance level? Well, when I first came in as a rookie, I could, I, I could literally show up five minutes before practice yeah. and go out there and, you know, you felt good. You could just go out there, you were young, your body didn't bother you at all. Now what I do is I get up two hours before practice starts, I come in, I get myself going, I do a lot of things, stretching, uh, I see the, all, the, uh, all the, the scientists guys we brought in to help yeah. us get my body firing and stuff like that. So I take care of my body uh, just so I can feel fresh each and every day. But uh, it, it definitely, the more years you play in the NFL, the more you have to do to be able to play at a high level. You guys have been doing that. You've got the sports uh, psychologist. You've got the, uh, the, the uh, nutritionist that gives oh, yeah. you the right food. Every guy that walks off the field, they've got a, uh, a shake, a shake that's made just for them, yep. just for your just body type and, and what you eat and the, and the whole thing. You've had them now for a little over a year. Can you, can you mm -hmm. tell a difference? Can you tell a difference from the way you feel on the practice field, the way you feel on game day? Yeah, well, you know, we play and down here in South Florida. The, the, the weather plays a big part in, in what we do. And so when we come out the field, they want to cool our body temperatures down as soon yeah. as possible just because we've been out there so long in the heat practicing. And so they give us a shake. Whatever guys want, they tell them, you know, this is what I want. Yeah. There's a guy that needs to put on weight. They'll put a lot of protein in there, you know, stuff that accommodates yeah. the guy. And so they, they do a great job. You know, they, they test our urine before practice to yeah. see if we're dehydrated. If we're dehydrated, they give us water bottles. Yeah. They a lot of different stuff. If a guy's they, tight, they, they, they test every day different. for dehydration. Every, every day, day they right? test and for that kind of stuff. And then they adjust your your intake based on where you are exactly. on that given day. They'll shoot out a text like, "Hey, you got to drink three Gatorades before yeah. practice starts yeah. just to get back to where we want you to be." And so they've done a great job. And what they've done is put every player in a position to be successful and to be able to make this team during training camp. So they've done a great job. They make it easy for us. Yeah. You know, we're excited they brought him in. Uh, Mr. Ross does everything, you know, first class to make sure that his yeah. players that he has on this football team can go out there and be productive each and every that day. That stadium down the road is about done, man. I can't wait to you see it. You looking forward to it? I can't wait to see it. I can't. I, I mean, I, I've seen part of it with the roof. I haven't seen the inside, but it's going to be uh, pretty interesting to see the, there. The years I started spending money and I bought a suite, they yeah. want to put a roof on there. Not, <laughs> not, 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 now my girl don't want to sit outside anymore. Yeah. It's so spoiled in the suite, so now I'm, I'm stuck. I'm, I'm in a hard yeah, place. Yeah, bro, come on, you got it. You are, you're all right. You're all right. <laughs> hey, uh, you, during the offseason, um, how does your off season go? Do you travel a little bit, and if so, where where do you go? And honestly, uh, as soon as the season's over, I, I take a week off, and yep. then I start back training. I feel yep. like for me, it's worked for me. It's been productive yep. so far uh, to just stay in shape year year round. So you'll take some short weekend trips. I'll take or a weekend that, trip. But... You know, uh, obviously, you know, you you ha when you're in a relationship, you, you kind of have to yep. you know yep. give in a little bit. So you, we took a three day trip to the Bahamas this year, but yeah, it was good. the only thing we did. How's uh, how's your brother Marquise doing? He's doing good. He's healthy. healthy. Finally, yeah. man. It, it was tough for him. You know, he's a tough yeah. kid. Yeah. He, he went through seven surgeries on that ankle, Jeez. different infection after infection. Yeah. And uh, just for him to be able to go out, back out there and play football was just, you know, it was, it, was, it put a smile on our family, yeah. man. Because at a, at a point during that time, they thought they were going to have to – you cut the leg off, and we're like, how, yeah. how, could, how could just, you know, this turn into that? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he overcame it. 
and we're just happy that you know he's back playing football. Well, we're happy you're back with us Thank here you. and enjoy it. Appreciate, appreciate you stopping by today, and uh, I'm sure we'll have you on as, a, as the season rolls around. But looking for good things out of you and that offensive line, and certainly this football team. And I know the fans are are waiting for it and clamoring for uh, for everything we're all looking for, and uh, hopefully it comes to fruition. Well, we need change in Miami, and this will be the year to start it. All right, that's Thank the you. audible for today. We'll catch you again on Wednesday at 4:30 right here. We'll see you then. Have a good evening.